I am the body snatcher. You know we love tummy tucks on this show. Welcome back to Unboxing. Welcome back, loyal fight fans, to another round of Unboxing. And today, we will be discussing a lot of topics. The first thing we're going to touch on is the absolutely epic Hall of Fame for boxing this year. Then we're going to move on to a well-deserved, even though we're a boxing podcast, a well-deserved coverage of UFC 275. And then we will move on to Berlanga versus Angulo. Jaime Mangia versus Jimmy Kelly, and we will preview what will certainly be literally no less than an absolutely epic dogfight of human wills uh, in the Arthur Betterbia versus Joe Smith Jr. fight that I cannot wait for. Let's jump right in. First and foremost, please hit that subscribe button. I work very hard for you guys, and if you know anybody that enjoys combat sports, especially boxing, but UFC as well, like we're previewing here or reviewing today, uh, any kind of combat sports, they probably enjoy watching this show. Uh, Let's start off with this Boxing Hall of Fame. COVID's been a thing. No matter what, how you feel about it, that is the reason that uh, that they have not put on Boxing Hall of Fames every year. And so this is the first year back at it. And because of that, because of all the weight, we didn't get a boiled down who's getting in and then they have to leave some people out. Here's some honorable mentions. First and foremost, Floyd Money Mayweather and yours truly, daddy's going to do a short on that one uh to, to because I I specifically want to touch on him and 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 his uh Hall of Fame induction. Then we got some names you might recognize, Bernard Hopkins, Shane Mosley, Juan Manuel Marquez, Miguel Cotto, James Tony, Roy Jones Jr. How about on the women's side, Layla Ali and Wolf you don't know who Ann Wolf is? Check out Ann Wolf, dude. Uh, and UFC and boxing uh, absolute legend Holly Holmes. So let's let's start there. Those are the names that were mentioned in there. And as I said, we're gonna do a short uh, on 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 the Floyd Money Mayweather uh, whole whole thing of being inducted to the Hall of Fame. You know, spoiler alert. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. We are all flawed human beings, um, but he has not been in the boxing ring. Uh, Outside, you could say different things. That Hall of Fame speech was absolutely beautiful. I felt that. That touched me. Uh, As a boxing fan, I I was all about that. Uh, And and, and I thought that it was beautiful that, uh, you know, of a trash-talking kind of career. He's gave kind of motivational speeches more recently. You know, since being like officially retired, even though he did, uh, uh, you know, little little like exhibitions and and things like that. Um, and and if you haven't seen his latest exhibition, go and go and check that out. He's walking around with the with the with the round uh, number of the the card instead of he took it away from the <laughs> the, the girl and was walking around it. He's an absolute showman. He's had his flaws as a human being, um, but he is an absolute legend in boxing. And I loved how he was humble, how the whole thing was giving praise to his family and his friends and the people that helped him come up in the world and uh, giving absolute, you know, praise to, so to speak, his co-workers, right? Uh, And people that he has personally fought before uh, (laughs) himself um, and saying, I wouldn't be here without you. Uh, I, I absolutely love that. And that list of names is epic. Everybody up there was beautiful. You got to go check out some videos uh, uh, on that Boxing Hall of Fame. Um, they had absolutely great coverage of that thing. They had epic fighters, epic analysts. Everything about it was absolutely fantastic. 
Uh, and 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 like I said, look forward to a short uh, about that. I just I just thought that it was honestly touching as a boxing fan. Usually we leave the Hall of Fame thinking that is beautiful. Like I agree with the people that maybe went in. Sometimes not always, but most of the times yes. But every single year there's people that are left out. This is a catch up year here, and. I wish that every year was like this. I mean, you got thousands of more names that you can induct into that uh, for being one of the oldest sports there is. Here on Unboxing, we're delivering you the boxing news, and, and that is first and foremost. Now, let's touch on this UFC 275 card. Yuri Prochotka versus Glover Teixeira. Uh, Valentina Shevchenko versus Talia Santos. We did a short about that as well because... There's a little bit of iffiness in, in the scoring there, though I am more of a boxing guy, so I leave that up to greater minds, and um, I'm sure they're going to touch on this. Even my short, I kind of sent it off and, 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 and in hopes that they would touch on it, kind of like a fan comment even, really, um, on End New MMA Show, so definitely go check out End New MMA Show. They're going to, you know, they're, they're always there every week recapping great fights. And this card, you know, if I, if I can say, like, with criticism and respect at the same time, I believe that the UFC has been in a bit of a lull. And it just so happens to be in, in the same year that boxing's just been on a high, on a high note. Um, and that hasn't been the case previously. And I thought that the UFC really needed this. Uh, and, and absolutely a, a great card anyway, where they had three guaranteed fights and some other good ones, but three guaranteed ones. Usually the UFC has had, you know, times where they just load. I mean, you, you got to catch the undercard a lot of times. That's, that's kind of been their thing. So this one, they had a lot of fights that you weren't necessarily looking forward to. If you're not a diehard fan that really lived up, um, to the hype. And those three fights that you were looking forward to, I'm going to dare to say that they were better than we we hoped they could be. I watched this pay-per-view and it's been, I've watched many UFC pay-per-views, but it's been a while. It's been a while since I've ordered one. And part of it is doing this show, you know, which is, which is directly kind of related to boxing more so. So like anybody else, you know, I, I have to focus on that first, um, but boxing, you know, this weekend for boxing was was a little bit, at least, <laughs> listen, it maybe didn't even turn out that way again, but at least, uh, you know, on paper, it, it didn't look to be uh, ultra competitive or, and it wasn't stacked cards. So um, I, I, I went back and watched those boxing fights, but I spent my Saturday night with friends watching this UFC 275 and I caught the feels, man. I caught the feels again. And I love that, and I'm all about that, and I'll never deny it. Uh, I, I love combat sports, and it just so happens I'm first and foremost a boxing fan, but I watched this UFC 275 card, and I caught the feels all over again. And it reminded me of how great of a sport, you know, the UFC is as well, man. It, it, it reminded me of that. Um, let's, let's first off touch, like, so it's kind of out of order, but like I said, uh, I'd refer you to the kind of little bit of short. It wasn't really a short, but it's a short video. It's only two minutes of, of kind of what I touched on with the uh, Valentino Shevchenko versus Talia Santos fight. That, I, I wasn't sure what to make of it. Again, I leave it up to better minds, and I'm looking forward to seeing the new MMA show, which I, which I follow heavily, and, and see what they have to say about it with the scoring. And I have open ears, but I have my own opinion for whatever it's worth. For whatever it's worth. I've watched a lot of fights in the UFC before, right? Where I am a boxing guy. So I very much value the striking aspect, okay? And I don't mind some grappling. And I love Muay Thai. So especially the clinch, the knees, the elbows. And, and a little bit of grappling. If you're going straight for submissions. If it's something to behold. If there's loads of ground and pound. You finish a guy. I don't mind that at all. That's what the, that's what makes the sport what it is. But I've always watched these fights. And where, they're, where it's a little grappling heavy. A, a little bit wrestling heavy. And come away with the fact that. Man, I thought. 
you know, sometimes they just get owned, right? <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't stay on the feet and, 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 and it kind of is what it is. But I've watched a lot of fights. I'll, I'll make a case in point. Um, you know, Corey Sandhagen versus TJ Delashaw was one. There's a lot of others, but that one just comes straight to my mind. Um, and there were others. The Max Holloway uh, versus Volkanovski 2 in particular, you know, that's another one. There's a lot of fights that I've watched where I just think, how'd this guy not win? Or how'd this girl not win? You know, uh, because a lot of it would be on the feet. And, and I know what I'm looking at a bit there. You know, I know what I'm looking at there. And I, and I just think that's, that's crazy because I, I saw the person win right? Because of the striking. And then I recognize, I don't have to be a fan of it. I'm a realist. So I recognize it doesn't matter if I like it or not. Like there's, there's a lot of, of wrestling. So I can say, ah, yeah, okay. You got this round, but he, he wrestled a lot and is a little bit dull. I've seen a lot of these fights and that TJ Dillashaw Sandhagen fight in particular. Um, it's not that I even take so much because overall I did think the fight was close. Okay. Um, but I thought that Sandy Hagen might have should have maybe won that fight because I think that's the perfect uh, reference to make uh, in touch with this Shevchenko Santos fight because it was kind of the same thing. The uh, the grappling that won TJ Dillashaw that fight was short. There was a little bit of short shots and they were here and there. Not only were they not hard at all. Uh, but they were sparsed out in between and there were, it felt like 30, 40 whole seconds of, of a five minute round, right? So almost a minute of five minutes, um, of, of overall just holding, um, Corey against the fence. That's what I saw here. But listen, I watched that fight. I thought that Sandy Hagen should have won that fight back in the day. Right. And then. I, I thought I was learning that, listen, it's not, I need to look more at what I'm looking at. Uh, the control time is valued more. And so now to hear, well, like when I, when I witnessed that, and I've witnessed many other fights like that, and, and it wasn't vicious ground and pounds. There were no submission attempts or, or, or nothing ever close to, to an actual submission getting in even close. Um, I've watched that many times before and I always come away just thinking that, yeah, this wasn't, this wasn't, uh, I, I don't see how it happened, but I thought I was learning. I thought I was learning that control time is valued. Um, and so I'm trying to learn like you do with any sport. Like if you're new to boxing, you learn stuff, you know? And I thought I was learning because I am a realist so I'm not an ignorant person that says, I didn't like this style of fighting. And therefore, it means that i that's the reason I think this other person should have won. I want to learn. So I've learned that control time is valued. And it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily... So listen, to watch those fights and get a little bit disappointed, but think, I've come away with something. And I'm, I'm learning more how to score a, a, a round in MMA. Then to watch this Talia Santos fight, I can imagine ahead of time here that a response or whatnot to, to uh, my question about this would be there wasn't much done with the control time. But that's kind of what I'm getting at here is that I've seen that before where there's not ground and pound that is nonstop. Um, I've seen straight up holding. Uh, they didn't, you know, this is a different fight that was, I agree, even though I was disappointed, I bet against it, but Francis Nagano beat Cyril Gaon, okay? That that was another thing in that fifth round when it was a close fight that I scored 2-2 leading into that last round. Um, Francis Nagano was literally, I mean, I rem this one wasn't too long ago, okay? He was, I did a video about it. Should they be able to do this or not? It doesn't seem right. It was laying there. There was barely, when I say barely, I mean two whole minutes and maybe five shots 
six shots were landed on the ground in two minutes and none of them were heavy. Um, it was control time. It was control time. I watched it and it mattered then. But now that it is this shevchenko Salia santos fight, I imagine the response and what people will, will tell me is, hey, listen, you know, so there was control time, but nothing was done with it. And there weren't a lot of shots landed, right? Are you with me here? And, and, there, was, and there were chokes put in, but they weren't tight. And they were more like neck cranks than, than, than actual tight chokes around the neck. Um, I've seen that before and it didn't matter then. And, and I always agreed with that assessment. I agreed with that assessment, but I thought I was learning something. And now we're on to watching this fight, which is mainly control time by Talia Santos. Um, I will grant that everything on the feet, Shevchenko looked better. I will, I, I'm aware, it's not agreeing, it's, it's stats. And even if they're slightly off, it, it wouldn't even matter in this case that uh, Shevchenko was landing more round after round, every round, every round almost, I, I, I think. Four out of five rounds for sure. Um, and now it's like they flipped it on me and said, wow, you know, no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because she wasn't doing much with it. And, and I just feel like this will be an issue if it's not sorted out clearly. Because when it's laid out clearly, I see that. I already see the argument. Not much was done with the control time. Talia Santos was all lay and pray on top of Shevchenko. Couldn't sink in uh, significant chokes. Was being hit while even taking uh, Shevchenko's back. But I don't... I've watched that. I've watched that fight a bunch of times before. So it doesn't make sense now is is my thing. Um, and yeah, anyways, we're going to move on from that. I, th I thought for whatever my opinion is worth that Talia Santos won that fight. Little PS note here. Daddy won almost $500 uh, that Saturday. And that was one of the fights that I needed Shevchenko to win in um, because I bet on her. And so I stormed out of my own apartment there uh, <laughs> with the last minute of the fifth round there thinking it doesn't matter if she wins this fifth round now she's she's lost this fight already and then uh, my friends came out and said you won you did it they gave it to her and I celebrated I celebrated but I I because I've seen robberies in box I've seen robberies and everything but yeah I didn't think she won that fight at all I stormed out of my own house as a matter of fact thinking that I Lost my money on that bet. Um, let's go on to Yoani on Jacek versus Weili Zhang. Weili Zhang uh, absolutely brutally KOing Yoani on Jacek. I've never really seen her been done like that before. I know that one Rose fight, they've had two, and I know the one that didn't go the distance, she was TKO'd. Um, I've never seen her done like this before. Uh, she got a spinning back fist that knocked her flat down to her face. Great stoppage there. And she retired shortly after. A uh, quick touch on that as Yoani Jacek kind of, I, I mean, always been an absolutely epic, amazing fighter for female fighting. Uh, and, and But uh, I wouldn't have said before this, uh, aside from her resume and the great things she's done in the sport, um, She's kind of been a trash talker. She kind of started her career off as more of a bully. It was nice to see this retirement be ultra respectful. And I thought she deserved every bit of love that she got. I'm sending whatever my love means to uh, to you want a young J check and uh, fantastic career for you. She has still, I believe, uh, the most title defenses are tied for the most title defenses, at least, if not the most, um, in that strawweight division. She is uh, pretty fantastic, and it, and it was a little sad. I, I, I was celebrating. I also, you know, I placed bets on all three of these fights, including some others that, that uh, Wei Li Zhang would win. I thought she'd win because she'd wrestle more this time than, than in their first fight. 
And I thought that because Wade Lee has fought two other times uh, since that first fight and Joanna had not, um, that she would win. And it turned out that really, I mean, she did wrestle a bit in that first round, but it turned out it was just not enough at all. At, uh, it, it, or it didn't It didn't even matter, I felt like. It, it was a sad ending there. But that retirement speech was beautiful from Ioana. And uh, all the best to you. You deserve everything everything uh, that you've earned in this, in this sport. Um, and the Yuri Prohachka Clover Tech Sheriff fight. That's the fight that gave me the feels again, really, man. I mean, the card was good before that, and I was like, this is already a good card. If the main event was a little lackluster, I'd still have talked about it and said this was a good card. But that fucking main event was absolutely crazy in every way you could imagine. It had all the wrestling, all the grappling, all the submission attempts from both men. It had all the striking. It had, <laughs> with the striking, there was almost no defense on Showcase, okay? I mean, this was, a, this was one for the fans. There was, like, no defense on Showcase, basically, from either of these men that much. I mean, Glover's trying to roll with punches a little more because he's older. I think that's smart. But even that, he just kind of... He kind of gave up on that as the fight went on. It was just like a dog fight. Um, and I had Glover winning that fight. Again, I don't, I, I, whatever my opinion's worth, I had Glover winning that fight at, at, in, in the final minute of the fifth round. And he looked like he might finish Prohachka, who then flipped him back over and, and took, uh, you know, top control from flipping over using his legs off the cage. And, Beating up Glover uh, with ground and pound, which we had seen previous as well. We had seen Glover beating him up with ground and pound as well. I mean, we saw every goddamn thing in this fight. And these are the kind of fights that it doesn't matter, in my opinion. And the reason it gives me chills is this is why both sports can be. This is why combat sports is great, is fights like this. We see this all the time in boxing. And we see this quite a bit. In MMA as well. It doesn't matter that it's a different sport. The whole reason this fight is great. I mean the biggest reason to me. There's others. But the biggest reason is. Uh, it's a it's a show of the human spirit. And these men gave every goddamn inch of themselves in this fight. And they came away. Uh just astounding everyone who watched this fucking thing uh there was nothing left in their ta- in the tank of either men um there was nothing there was nothing left that that, that 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 they could give more and i think the only reason that glover tapped out being a jiu-jitsu expert is because he had expended every piece of himself and was winning that fight because of it and yuri prohachka not having any sort of ground ability that I was ever aware of, um, was getting touched up constantly and just being a dog of a human being, um, only held in through willpower, made the fight close enough, but I thought he was losing, and then sunk a choke in on a legendary black belt in jiu-jitsu. I mean, this fight had every fucking thing in it. And that is my touch on the UFC 275 card. Wow. That's all I, wow. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, Berlanga versus Angulo. I'm going to just do this quick. Edgar Berlanga, Tyson bites Angulo's ear. We don't see stuff. We call it Tyson bite because we don't see stuff like that all the time. Um, you see even dirty fighting, you don't see stuff like that. That's out of nothing but fear frustration. I'm a little bit upset over Berlanga doing that because I'm a Berlanga fan. Um, he won this fight. He was another bet I placed to win. Um, it was a close fight. I, I did score him winning it, but that's miscounting that he could have been just straight up disqualified for, for doing that bite and it's favoritism that he didn't. I also don't want to see him on main events anymore for for a little while and it's not because of the bite it's because of his overall it's because of why he bit his opponent it's the overall ability there he's a uh 
He's a talented guy, and uh, but he he is still. I mean, Angulo is not. Wow, a step up in opponent, so it was hard. And, and we touched on this in the preview last week. He's not even faced real step up opponents yet at all, and so to see him barely winning fights and now to see him barely win a fight unimpressively kind of and do and have to do that is just it's disturbing and then and it puts me off a little bit and in that same vein you know Jaime Mangia took on uh, Jimmy Kelly who the fuck knew who Jimmy Kelly was this was all about Jaime Mangia is a, 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 a great fighter but now after watching this fight it's like almost like Jesus Christ, what were you doing? And when the fight was announced, I thought he'd just run him over and bulldoze him in the first, second, and it wouldn't make it past the third for sure round. Uh, and and I just thought, you know, even then and now, you know, Oscar Oscar De La Hoya just, and Golden Boy Promotions just cannot get this man a, a, a good fight that is worthy for us to see. Uh, as he is one of the top level guys, Jaime Mangia, and he needs to be fighting someone like Demetrius Andrade or something like that. He needs to be fighting Triple G or something like that. You, we don't, I don't, I don't, I, it's, yeah, man. He knocked him out in the fifth round, finally. He got buzzed and hurt really bad, kind of, in the early rounds of that fight. And even besides that one round and that and that one time that Jimmy Kelly hurt the man, had no business being in the ring with him, uh, he also won other rounds against Jaime Mangia. So I don't know how to feel about that. It was kind of disappointing on both ends with the berlanga Mangia thing. It's like, you, you, you have to realize, if you're going to put on a fight, against an uh, with a great fighter supposedly great fighter against an opponent that no one knows of and is like why the fuck aren't we seeing a better competition in the, in a fight that's this is like a weekend that's, that's like old boxing i thought we we're past that we've been chattering on about how awesome boxing has been this is like old boxing to see a fight that nobody wants to see because it's an A-class guy versus somebody you never heard of. The guy who fucking drove him in the cab to the fight in the first place and then gets in the ring with him. Uh, and, and you go and anybody that has bo- that has fucking bought tickets to this thing or is watching it on TV is like, yeah, it's kind of it's going to suck a little bit. But let's see if we see a vicious knockout. And then it's an uninspiring performance against the person. This is for both guys, you know, Berlanga and Mangia in, in, in their in their competition is is just off putting. It's off-putting, and that's why we did a bigger coverage on the UFC 275 card this week. Um, And that's that. We're going to get back to good boxing now, and I can tell you that I know this fight won't let us down. I know that. I know that. I'm certain of it. Watch this fight. This coming Saturday, when Arthur Betterbeef takes on Joe Smith Jr., let's Go, Joe Smith Jr. First off, the Long Island Union man, the common man, as he called himself and was made famous when he fought Bernard Hopkins, an old Bernard Hopkins, who said, that's a common man, special man. Common man, fucking special man. And got sent through the ropes in one of the most vicious, probably the most vicious, until that Michael Conlon fight happened, uh, sent through the ropes and landed flat on his head, you know, six, seven feet down um, by Joe Smith Jr. Joe Smith Jr. also then went on to uh, win a world title, a real world title, against an incredible opponent uh, in in his last outing, and now is uh, going to take on who is probably the best fighter, you know, short of maybe... um, uh, 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 sure. Yeah, I, 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 I would listen. Uh, Bivol is great. I was gonna say short of Demetrius Bivol, he's great, but I think he's still second. I think that Archer Betterbee of his is the best. Uh, but there's a caveat to that. Archer Betterbee of his last fight, he got, uh, he stopped the opponent again. He's all knockouts, by the way, uh, and he is undefeated to this day. And he is a world champion of that weight class. And I still place him at number one. But that last, perf- this is the perfect time to make a fight like this. Because his last performance, he looked slower. He looked uh, tired. 
even though he ended up stopping the guy, looked like it took a lot out of him to do that, and he was just kind of mustering up some willpower, and he got spliced the hell open um, by a guy that, that he was supposed to just run through uh, in better be able to last fight. Joe Smith Jr. is an absolute dog of a human being. Joe Smith Jr. has always been that way. He has a natural ability that he hits incredibly hard. That's something you're born with and can't be trained. Um, and the things that can be trained, uh, he has been trained in and is working on steadily and steadily improving. And he had to earn every bit of that in his last fight to become a world champion Uh against Maxime Vlasov, that fight was fucking unreal. And I am forever a Joe Smith. I don't care if he loses and he goes on loses again and retires. I don't care. That's not how the shit works for me. I'm a Joe Smith Jr. fan for life because uh, I was a bit before. I, 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 The Bernard Hopkins thing was so impressive, even though he's an older guy, no one knew who he was then. Um and uh, and I was a, I was a fan then, but a little bit turned off. Like ah, oh, poor Bernard, you know he's a legend. Um, and then <laughs> and then he had that Maxine Vlasov fight and became a world champion, um, fighting an incredibly slick defensive fighter in Vlasov, who you just thought beforehand. I mean, he and won as an underdog there. I'm forever a fan of his, and I have belief in Joe Smith Jr. And, and here's another thing. I, I, I'm i going to give you like a better parlay, probably on a short, or at least on the Instagram or something like that, uh, mm, uh, underscore boxing, I believe it is, something like that. Just look up in boxing, you'll find that shit, okay? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you a better parlay, as I always do, that's a little bit safer. But uh, you know we like it when we can pick a dog. And Joe Smith Jr. is an unreasonable dog in this fight because um, he should be the underdog. But the, he's, he's, a, he, he's an enormous underdog. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be closer than this. You're going to get a lot of plus money on Joe Smith Jr. just to win, period. Uh, and I think that he is fully capable of doing that. Uh, better be if, yeah, getting cut wide open against a lesser opponent than Joe Smith Jr. in his last outing. Looking more tired. Not looking himself. Not looking like the killer that he was, even though he ended up stopping the guy. He And and, and besides the cut, he lost rounds as well. And, and he just didn't look like the killer that he once was. And... I believe in Joe Smith Jr. and his ability. I think he's picked up his boxing ability more. And I think that he is ready to go for this fight. I think that he is literally like a, a kind of... I don't want to get too romantic on you here. But I think he's literally a kind of a rocky figure. And again, he could totally lose this fight. But you will bet your sweet ass. I wish they had a fucking gambling line on this. Joe Smith Jr. will not give up. And if he is 100%, if we see a, a 100% Arturo Betterbeef that looked better than he's ever done before, Joe Smith Jr., even in a losing effort, will win rounds. He will hurt Arturo Betterbeef, win or lose. He will hurt that man. He will hurt that man. And if he has to die in that ring to do so, I, I really mean this, dude. You... You don't understand there's different kind of people and it doesn't matter who you like. He's an Arturo Gotti type, okay? He's not going to give up. And there's very few people like that uh, that have that kind of willpower in their mind, okay? They don't need all that ability. They, they, they need the ability to win. And they, they need stuff like that. But they're born with the power and they're born with the passion, and they will not be deterred um, by losing round after round after round. I, I really just am amped for this fight, man. You're going to see just two of the kind of best guys in that weight class, first off, for a unification of titles in a, in a great division in boxing. And you're going to see not boxing fun. You're not going to see slick boxing. You're not going to see technical boxing. You're going to see two, uh, two bait dogs turn champions uh, put in there against each other. Two dogs with no new tricks. Uh, unless Joe Smith Jr. has learned a, learned a couple. He's learned a couple, but 
he'll 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 resort to what he does here. The, this is a match made in heaven for an absolute brawl. Um, and I'm going to love every minute of it. Let's go Joe Smith Jr., baby. Let's go the common man. And until next time, enjoy those fucking fights and prepare yourself for an absolute dogged war of two human beings that say, eh, we don't really care so much about the human side. We're going to show you why human beings are still a type of animal.